Okay, we're on live. Thank you. Um, thanks. Okay, so like my mother, you know, had food issues. Um, um, a few things like if if uh, uh, I share my experience, and if anyone if anyone's got sort of issues with parents, which I think a few people may have issues mm -hmm. with parents, but anyway. Uh, okay, so. Um, one of the things is like uh, that I share is like you know you can do on behalf of your parents. God did not create it, so it's not real. I mean, the, I mean, that it. Uh, I had one miraculous instance where it was quite spectacular where I did that, whereby um, my mother suddenly went to the doc GP because she was having heart failure, and she she was also uh, you know she had problems with food, but she went thing and uh, she you know she her heart function was bad and her legs started to swell up mm. and uh, and she went to the GP and the GP said there's nothing we can do because you've got heart failure that's just the way it is and she came back and she was really upset because the doctor didn't give her any kind of pill and said like you know your heart can't pump your blood around so your, your legs are starting to swell so I had always been doing cancelling of beliefs for myself and God did not create things for us. I never had the idea, it didn't pop in, that I could do it on behalf of my mother before. So the idea popped into my mind and I was upset that the doctor had, had said there's no hope. You know, just go back home. And I did, God, God did not create oedema, which is swelling. God did not create oedema in my mother's uh, legs, so it's not real. And as soon as I started to do that, actually, you know, on the same day my mother called me and said, look, it's starting to go down. You know, and then uh, and I kept doing it, and I think within two or three days it was gone, and her legs. And I knew that was like a miracle. That, and I, I learned something that you can cancel beliefs or, or say God did not create it, like a surrogate. It's not necessarily that it will always work, but it, sometimes it will. And uh, that was a spectacular thing. So, also with uh, my parent, you know, I had a difficult relationship with her when I was in active addiction, food addiction. Uh, and she had food problems as well, so it was a very difficult relationship between son and mother. But I just, you know, I, I had the thing of, like, I wanted to transcend my mother, which meant that I don't want any outcomes, expectations anymore of my mother. So that was one thing I wanted to do. I also wanted to commit to, I, I did a few things. I wanted to commit to unconditional love, as well another, so that if she ever did anything that was criticizing me or that triggered me. I would try and offer a cup of tea, and uh, and uh, that was my. I know she liked being made tea, so that was my active thing. A few things um, which I I did was uh, I knew that never to. I always had tried to have this thing of never to enter into an argument with my mother. One of the things was her political views weren't my political views, and she in the early days she would try and snare me into political arguments, you know. And she'd say, like, you know, they should, she'd have, like, CNN on or something on, and there'd be a politician on, and she'd say something. And then, and then so what I, so the thing I realized was that, you know, I knew the spiritual tool, which was to make no comment and to let her have her rant, make no comment, and then switch the subject. You know, so I didn't try and go into conflict with her. And what I found after a period of time was that she stopped bringing up those topics, you know, and then, you know, like, we, you know, like my favorite topic was to talk about the pet birds, the pigeons. Talk about the pigeons, you know, she'd say, go off about this politician, and I'd just stay quiet. And then she'd run out of steam, and then I'd say, you know, hey, 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 you know, what, you know make some comment about the, the pets. And eventually she stopped making these political, the, you know, she'd start, stop trying to bait me into these political conflicts that we used to have. And I make the cup of tea. In the early days, like she would say something that would irritate me, and then I'd have to go to my room, feel my feelings, pray for her, and then it would be a long time. Then I'd come back and make her tea. But I found over the months and years, I could make, give her the cup of tea earlier and earlier, mm. and then I'd get less and less triggered. I let go. I had to use the the thing of making her voice tone meaningless, like her, her the way she would say things would trigger me. So I'd have to like you know, no, her voice is as meaningless as a the sound of a car, which is as meaningless as the sound of running water, you know, so that I'd have no effect to whatever vo voice tonality, some sort of phrases which I would interpret as critical, 
you know, I had to let that go. So she could, I mean, it doesn't matter what she, words she uses, they're all meaningless, you see. Uh, to let go of, like, mothers should behave a certain way. I let go of the idea that she's my mother. I haven't, you know, she, I haven't got a mother. It's a meaningless concept, you see. So I was letting go of all of this stuff, being the observer, practicing being the observer around her. And then it's like, and then over a period of some years, you know, we, we, the relationship transformed. We'd just have loving interactions, you know. As I stopped picking up the hooks and stopped expecting her, and then it, it just reversed, you know. We would just have loving, pleasant conversations. I was so grateful before, you know, we'd, we'd go and see films together, spend time, you know. We just like to go and see the Star Wars films together. And, um, you know, and at the time of her death, uh, when she went into hospital and as she was dying, you know, I was able to be there, you know, to be present and to tell her I loved her. She told me she loved her. And that was because I'm so happy I did that work in transcending my own baggage. And I found that uh, when I let the baggage in me, you know, the, re the reaction just became, the interactions became loving. So if you've got stuff with parents like, you know, like, Letting go of what my outcomes and expectations, staying the witnesser, not wanting the, not putting outcomes that they should behave in a way that I want them to behave. Letting go of, uh, letting go of be getting hooked into things like voice tone, types of words used, how they should behave. As you let those things go, also I found the thing of like not entering into arguments with them, trying to avoid arguments or staying neutral, and then switching it to something that's harmonious because uh, all of those things gradually shifted, shifted it to 180. And it's like, and as we know from like uh, Hoponopono, as you clear the data in you, then miraculous shifts can happen in the other person. So the power is in me clearing stuff as opposed to getting them to, to change, you see. So that, that, that's, that, that was, my experience, and if they're suffering, and if you feel sorry for them because they're suffering from things, it's not guaranteed, but just saying God did not create it. Because as you let go of your perceptions in you that they have that problem, sometimes a miracle can happen in them by you clearing it in you.